Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Play by Play Sports Broadcasting Camp Studios. I'm Simon Williams, alongside my partner, Dan Abington. We're bringing you all NBA draft action. So the Sixers, our home team, currently hold the number three overall pick in the draft with countless second round picks in this year and future years. So, Dan, let's analyze the Sixers' position for this draft. Well, I think we need to talk about the Timberwolves with the number one pick and the Lakers with the number two pick because it's all about what they decide for the Sixers. So, Carl Anthony Towns looks like he's going first. He has a very high upside. I think his offensive ability uh, has been noted the entire season, um, especially playing for such a great, well-rounded Kentucky team. that had countless stars, ten of them. Um, and I think it, his play helped propel them through their undefeated run, but I think the best big man in college basketball for the season was Jaleel Okafor, but I think that um, he's like the best, Jaleel Okafor is the best scorer, but Carl Anthony Towns is more well-rounded in terms of play, he's faster, he's, he's, he's more ability on the wing, and he can, he can actively more the attributes of a basketball player than Jaleel Okafor, I think, could as of right now, but I do think Jaleel Okafor could build to be a great basketball player. Uh, so, with Carl Anthony Towns looking to be number one, I would think the Lakers would want a solid big man behind Julius Randle with their second selection. It's just imagine uh, Jaleel and J- Julius Randle in the paint. I mean, those guys are tough, uh, grinded out big men who played for excellent programs at Duke and Kentucky, respectively. So, adding a Jaleel Okafor and Julius Randle combination would be dead in the Western Conference. Starting center right now is is. So, going with a center like Jaleel Okafor with Jaleel Randall, good offensive setup, that's because uh, you have a couple players that you're trying to win, you will start to a third option, because he has a better defensive. I think having a Kobe-Russell combination would definitely look, uh, look good on offense, and um, passing the ball around and getting open looks between those guys. I mean, both of them can nail shots from anywhere on the court. And I think we saw that with Russell this season. And he led Ohio State into the NCAA tournament and against uh, Wisconsin in the Big Ten tournament. And they really uh, gave him a run for their money there. So we saw the ability that uh, D'Angelo Russell had. Uh, so that leads us up to the number three pick, the Philadelphia 76ers. And the most logical option, if Russell isn't there, would be... Most likely... Best of the American prospects. 
Um, you see tape on, on Moutier, and everything kind of jumps out the screen. If D'Angelo Russell is gone, uh, point blank, the Sixers still need to address their problem at point guard. Manuel Moutier f- fits that in. If you draft Julie Loco for it, you're running the risk of Joel Embiid getting healthy again and then trying to figure out the combination of these three guys that actually works because no one's all can't play offense, Julio Okafor can't play defense, and you don't know what Joel Embiid's game is going to be in the pros. I think it's just best to commit to those guys the ideas of the Twin Towers and run with that, kind of let all the rest of the chips fall where they may. The big hole is at point guard. It's you got to get that fixed. you got to take care of So I'm not as skeptical of Moutier. I obviously love Russell, but that's just my take. Thank you, guys. here for play-by-play sports broadcasting camp studios. I'm Simon Williams. That's Dan Abington. We've been bringing you NBA action. Thanks so much for tuning in.